Welcome to AP Chemistry, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be looking at special types of reactions. Now this is a series, uh, if you're following my complete AP Chemistry course here on YouTube, then hopefully you've already watched lesson 11, which was about how to write net ionic equations, starting with precipitation reactions. Those are the most fundamental type. And then in lesson 12, we introduced uh, redox reactions and talked about what those are like. Well, in lesson 13, we're looking at some more redox reactions and we're also going to add in a few other types of reactions as well. So when we talk about redox reactions here, there are several types of redox reactions that deserve some special attention. And the first one that I'd like to talk about would be combustion reactions. Now, combustion reactions are fairly easy to write, but sometimes we forget that those are redox reactions as well. So when you have an example of a combustion reaction here, a complete combustion of a hydrocarbon in air is always going to produce carbon dioxide and water. So here's a very uh, simple, very typical example of that. If we have a sample of, of methane gas that's burned in air, you know, first of all, we have to know what methane is. And hopefully you know that that's CH4 at this point in your chemistry career. Uh, if you don't know that, then you might want to learn how to name some of those simple hydrocarbons. I do have a video for that, so you might want to review that if you don't already know those. Now, when something is burned in air, anytime something is burned, you're adding oxygen to it. So that's, that's the second part of it. Even though the, that reaction doesn't say there's oxygen, you should know that. Burning in air or burning something means that you're reacting it with O2. And the products, of course, we know are carbon dioxide and water. So there we have that uh, combustion reaction. Well, now, let's go one step further. Oh, before we do that, we should probably balance this, shouldn't we? Because this is not a balanced equation. We have, uh, looks like hydrogens need to be balanced. We'll put the a two over here. Oxygens need to be balanced. We'll put a two over here. So now it's a balanced equation. Now let's go one step further and determine the oxidation state of all elements in that reaction. So this is going to go back to something we learned in lesson uh, 12 about how to figure out the oxidation state. Now, hydrogen, since it's bonded with a nonmetal, is going to be plus one. And we have four of those, so the total charge of the hydrogens would be plus four. That means that the carbon has to be negative four to make the entire compound neutral. You see, uh, we're just using the uh, oxidation states are the ones we know to solve for the ones we don't know. It's like solving a puzzle. So oxygen is in its elemental state, so we're going to call that a zero. On the product side, there's oxygen again. When it's in a compound, it's normally a negative two, isn't it? And we have two of those, so the, the two oxygens will give us a total of negative four, which tells us that the carbon has to be positive four. And then if we go take a look at the water here, the oxygen once again is negative two, and that means the hydrogens have to be positive two, and there are two of those, so we divide it out to give uh, a total or an, an individual charge of positive one for each of the hydrogens. So those are the oxidation states of every single element in this combustion reaction. Now, can we tell which which elements are being oxidized and which ones are being reduced? Well, hopefully you can see that carbon goes from a charge of negative four, which is pretty low, all the way up to a charge of positive four, much higher. So since this charge is going up, we say that carbon is being oxidized. And oxygen is going from a zero down to a negative two in both of the products. So oxygen is being reduced since its charge is going down. So that's how we can figure out uh, what's happening in a simple combustion reaction. Now let, let's take a look at a more advanced type of redox reaction, and that's something called a disproportionation reaction. Now a disproportionation reaction, that's a long word, it's basically just a special type of redox reaction in which the same element is being oxidized and reduced at the same time. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say we have a piece of copper metal that's dropped into a solution of copper 2 sulfate. Now remember, whenever you have a redox reaction and there's a metal involved, normally it's the metal that's reacting with the metal ion. So the reactants are going to be copper 
and copper two ions as we see here. The sulfate is acting as a spectator ion, so we can ignore it. The sulfate's not doing anything. So we know that copper is uh, is a, a metal, of course, and metals are normally going to be oxidized. But what's it going to be oxidized into? Well, it's going to have to be oxidized into a form of copper that's, you know, has a lar has a higher charge than zero. So it's going to have to go up. But it's not going to go all the way up to plus two. It's going to go up to an intermediate state. You see, we have copper that has this low charge. Copper two has this high charge. They're both going to be uh, oxidized and reduced to a state that's right in the middle. So that's a plus one in this case. So copper is going to become a plus one charge. And likewise, the copper two is going to become a copper plus one charge. They get oxidized and reduced into the same thing. Okay, that's what disproportionation is going to have. It works best when you have these transition metals that have multiple states you know, copper can be either you know zero as copper metal or plus one or plus two. And so in this case, they're oxidized and reduced into that intermediate state. We have to balance these. Looks like we need to have an electron on the right side here in the first one. And looks like we need to have an, ox an electron on the left side over here in the second one. And so now we can say that since we are uh, losing an electron here, this is an oxidation. And since we're gaining an electron here, that is a reduction. Don't forget, always got to have one oxidation, one reduction. So now let's add these together. And the electron will cancel out, so that's good. So when you add them together, we get this. We have one copper atom in the solid state, plus two copper two ion, plus one copper two ion, rather, in the aqueous state. We'll produce two copper one ions in the aqueous state. You know, the one plus the one gets us the two. All right, let's try another type of disproportionation reaction. This one, some students might look at this and say, oh, what's going on here? This doesn't even look like a reaction at all. A solution of iron two chloride is allowed to stand in a beaker for several months. Sometimes these uh, types of, of reactions pop up on the AP exam or on a test or a quiz or something. And this, this, this puzzles students because it doesn't look like anything is happening here. Well, anytime you have a reaction that says uh, you have one of these uh, transition metal uh, solution compounds and they're standing in a beaker for months or weeks or a long time, that's a good sign that it's a disproportion, disproportionation reaction. And what's going to happen is that iron 2 ion is going to be both oxidized and reduced at the same time. You see, some of those ions are reacting with each other. So what's happening? Well, the iron 2 is going to be the reactant in both the oxidation and the reduction. So in this first reaction here, let's, let's just make that the uh, reduction. And that means it's going to have to go down in charge. So what charge of iron is less than plus 2? Well, hopefully, the only one that we know of is just plain old iron metal. So it's going to be iron 0, like that. And how about in the next process? This one, uh, iron 2 is going to have to go up in charge. It's going to have to be oxidized. So can you think of a form of iron that has a charge greater than plus 2? Well, if you've learned your ions over, the, over your time in, in AP chemistry, hopefully you know that there's a form of iron that's, that's positive 3. It does help if you know your charges on your transition metals here, that you know, iron can be plus 2 or plus 3. The last example, carbon, uh, not carbon, copper could be plus 1 or plus 2. So it does help if you know those, and your ion chart can help you, of course. Let's balance these. Uh, looks like we need to have two electrons on the left side over here to balance that out. And we need to have, looks like, one electron on the right side over here to balance this out. So since we're gaining electrons here, we're going to call this the reduction. And since we're losing electrons here, we're going to call that the oxidation. So now it's time to add them up to get the overall balanced equation. And as you can see, we actually can't add these up as they stand because uh, we have to have the electrons cancel out on both sides. So I'm going to have to multiply the oxidation by 2. And now everything can fall out when you add them together. The electrons cancel out 
on both sides. It looks like we actually have three of these iron two ions that will produce an iron atom solid and two of the iron three ions. So that's a good example of, actually two good examples there, of disproportionation reactions. Let's take a look at one more type of, uh, of uh, redox reaction. Like I said here, for a disproportionation reaction to work, it does work best if you have three oxidation states. So you'll have that elemental version, and then you'll have you know, two, usually in those, those transition metals, like a plus two and a plus three. Tin would be common in you know, a plus two and a plus four. Uh, copper is pretty common in a plus one and a plus two. So let's take a look at metals reacting with strong acids. So in this case here, when you have a strong acid, except for nitric acid, the nitric acid is kind of special, it does something else. But the other five strong acids, when they react with metals, produce hydrogen gas. And so if we take an example of this, like a piece of iron metal is dropped into hydrobromic acid. Well, once again, we know that the metal is going to react with the H plus in that strong acid. Don't forget, that's really the only part that we care about in that strong acid, just the H plus. The bromide is the spectator here, so we're not even going to worry about that. So the iron, Fe, is going to react with the H plus. So those are our reactants. Now, a metals get oxidized, don't they? So it's going to be oxidized into you know, some charged version of iron. Now, which one is it? Uh, if it's in solution, probably plus two. That seems to be the more common version if it's in solution, plus two. Um, in the case of hydrogen here, we know it's going to produce H2 gas. You know, it's going to be reduced from a plus one down to zero, as we have over here. Now we get to balance these. So it seems like in the first one here, we need to put two electrons on the right side over here to make that balance out. And we have a charge of zero and a charge of plus two, so that will balance it out. And charge down here, we probably need to balance our hydrogens first before we do anything else, so I'll do that. And we're gonna have to put, uh, you know, we have a plus two compared to zero, so let's put two electrons on the left side over here. So now we are ready to add these up, and we can see that we have an oxidation. We have an oxidation, drop my pen here. So we have an oxidation and a reduction. So I'm going to say that this one, since we are uh, losing electrons, that's my oxidation. And since we're gaining electrons, that is my reduction. And so now we can add these up as they stand. The electrons cancel out very nicely. So we have this, the iron atom in its solid state, plus two hydrogen ions, aqueous, will give us an iron two ion aqueous and hydrogen gas, H2. And it looks like that's balanced as it stands. So those are the main types of redox reactions. Now there are some other redox reactions. If you have acids present, and sometimes you'll see that something is acidified, it'll, it'll say that in the question, you can recognize these. Now, here's a common process where uh, dichromate, you know, Cr2O7 with a two a negative charge, is reduced into chromium-3 ions. That's a common uh, reduction process. You need to know that, that if you see a dichromate and it doesn't tell you what the product is, good chance that the product's gonna be a chromium-3. That's just how it is. You, need, you do need to know that. Uh, here's another one, permanganate. In this case, the permanganate uh, gets reduced into manganese-2 ions. So once again, if you see like a potassium permanganate or a uh, sodium permanganate solution there and it doesn't tell you what the product is, it's a good, good guess that it's going to be a manganese-2 ion that's produced there. We talked about nitrates and nitric acid. Uh, if you have a case where nitric acid is involved and there's a metal being added to it, the nitrate actually is what's doing something there. It's probably going to be producing nitrogen a monoxide gas. So if you ever have a nitrate being uh, reacted, then it's going to make NO as a, as a gas. And so you do need to know these. You might be wondering, though, these look really weird because, first of all, they're not balanced. 
and it doesn't look like they're very easy to balance. You, know, you have, you know, you could balance the chromiums on this one pretty easily, but how in the world do you balance something when you have seven oxygens over here and there are zero over there? there there's nothing to multiply. And the same thing with uh, this second case here. And, and honestly, in the third case as well, it doesn't work out. Well, that's what the next video is going to be about. We're going to learn how to balance these weird redox half reactions where you don't, where it looks like you're missing elements. So if you liked my video, if you learned something from my video, please smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so and hope you join in on my AP Chemistry Complete course here on YouTube. I'm Jeremy Krug. Join me again where we can learn some more, chemi more chemistry together.